is one I'm going to try to draw out and then I'll show you a picture as well afterwards. Um, so remember, so we're doing the corticospinal pathway here. What that means is from the cortex, the cerebral cortex, down into the spinal cord to control skeletal muscles. So this is a motor pathway. That's the first thing to know. If I say corticospinal, that means starting at the cortex and moving down. Um, you will see sensory pathways that go the opposite direction. So pay attention to the words. Um, tell me it starts spino something is starting at the spine. So that's a sensory pathway. So corticospinal is um, starting in the cortex. So I'm actually going to draw for you, attempt to draw the primary motor cortex. These are my grooves and fissures of the brain. Um, and then I'm gonna need to draw a few other brain regions. So here we're gonna have, oh, let's undo that one. Here's my attempt at the um, primary motor cortex up here. In the cerebrum. So this would be the cerebrum. This is going to be our midbrain and then going down to the medulla, the medulla oblongata. And then down here, I hope you can tell that this is a section of the spinal cord. So we need to start a signal um, in the primary motor cortex. This is where we're going to have some neurons, I'm gonna just draw it like that, little dendrites, and then here's our cell body. And these neurons are going to travel down through the brainstem, and then they're gonna cross. Where do they cross? They cross at the desiccation of the pyramids. Remember that? Um, where those fibers cross to the other side. Now, let's start at the top. This is our upper motor neuron. I actually have that coded right here. Red is our upper motor neuron. I have the neuron drawn kind of funky because I just wanted to show you um, a little bit of the accuracy here. There it is. Um, so this is called the pyramidal tract because this is a pyramidal cell. Um, this is a reconstructed pyramidal cell shown here. Um, the red and blue, I'm sorry, the, um, the soma and dendrites are shown in red and the blue is the axon and then that's gonna travel down. So this is why it's called a pyramidal cell. And this is the other reason it's called the pyramidal tract. So the corticospinal pathway is also called the pyramidal pathway. That's actually also why these cells cross down in those pyramids, the pyramids of the medulla, and then desiccate across to the other side, the desiccation of the pyramids. So decussation, decussation means to cross. So I'm actually to remind you here what that looks like. This is an image of the mid brainstem here, midbrain pons medulla. Here are those pyramids these are the axons of those pyramidal cells that come from the primary motor cortex. Isn't that cool? 
And then here they decussate, which means cross to the other side. Then what we're gonna do is have a lower motor neuron. I'm gonna draw this in white, although I may not be able to do that very well. So I will do light blue. That's going to be our lower motor neuron in blue here. So when this cell reaches the spinal cord, I didn't quite finish that yet, right? Where is it going to travel to? Which horn? It needs to ultimately get to the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Why? Well, that's where um, our somatic motor neurons are that ultimately are going to stimulate skeletal muscle contraction. So I could draw in my cell body of my somatic motor neuron that projects out to skeletal muscle. I'm going to add in text that tells you this is a skeletal muscle. And I'm going to add in the spinal nerve here, which would become the spinal the anterior ramus. So here you go. This is the corticospinal pathway, also called the pyramidal pathway. Two more things to show you. One first is this picture here. If you remember, you saw this last week with spinal cord. The spinal cord itself has these ascending and descending tracks. Why might I be showing you this right now? Well, descending tracks, these are our motor tracks, right? Um, do you see one here that you maybe should know now? Anterior corticospinal tract and lateral corticospinal tract. This is just referring to where they are, right, in the spinal cord. Here's the lateral one. Here's the anterior one in the front. Um, I'm not gonna have you identify where these are. That's where the information is traveling down before its synapses in the anterior horn. This is white matter tracks with myelinated axons. So to bring this all together with a diagram is better than the one I drew. Let's look at it here. Here's the same thing I tried to draw, um, but hey, maybe a little better. So we've got these pyramidal cells that are going to travel down into the brainstem and then become the pyramids that then desiccate along here. That's where the left side of your body controls the right side. The left side of your brain controls the right side of your body and vice versa um, because of that decussation. Then we've got this, these um, corticospinal tracts. This, these are the white matter. These are the axons of the pyramidal cells that make up the lateral corticospinal tract and anterior corticospinal tract, both places they go. Ultimately, this is just one example here. You have a single, um, you have a nerve fiber here, an axon, exit the corticospinal tract so that it can synapse with the lower, lower motor neuron, which is in the interior gray horn. So upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron, this somatic motor neuron, the spinal cord, depending on what region of the spinal cord it's in, is going to control skeletal muscles in whatever body part that is, right? right. So if this is a cervical um, segment of the spinal cord, this might be skeletal muscles in the arm. If we are down in the lumbar spinal cord, these might be muscles in the leg. This is going to, these neurons are going to exit the tracks at different locations, different segments of the spinal cord in order to control 
those muscles in order to really control all of your muscles somewhere. 